joined the most successful, joined the most successful union organizing drive, union organizing drive in American history. In American history, we've never had anything, we never had anything before, before or since, or since like it, like it. In the 1930s as well. In the 1930s as well. Two political parties. Two political parties became very strong. Became very strong. The Socialist Party. The Socialist Party. And the Communist Party. And the Communist Party. Together. Together. The unions. The unions. The Socialists. The Socialists. And the Communists. And the Communists. Put enormous pressure, put enormous pressure on the government, on the government to do something, to do something for the suffering unemployed, for the suffering unemployed, for the people losing their homes, for the people losing their homes, for the people whose job wages were falling, for the people whose job wages were falling, whose job benefits were falling, whose job benefits were falling. To do for the people what people demand today. To do for the people what people demand today. But the difference was. But the difference was. They got it. They got it in the 1930s. In the 1930s. A just a short list. Just a, just a short list. In the depths of the depression. In the depths of the depression. When everyone from the president to the big businesses said there was no money. When everyone from the president to the big businesses said there was no money. The unions, the, unions, the, socialists, the socialists, and the communists, and the communists. We don't care. We don't care. We know you have the money. We know you have the money. We demand programs. We demand programs. And they got them. And they got them. Number one. Number one. Social security. Social security. For those of you who don't know. For those of you who don't know. We never had a social security system before. We never had a social security system before. In the middle of the depression. In the middle of the depression. We created Social Security. We created Social Security. Number two. Number two. In the middle of the depression. In the middle of the depression. We created the unemployment insurance program. We created the unemployment insurance program. For the first time in American history. For the first time in American history. If you were laid off. If you were laid off. Through no fault of your own. Through no fault of your own. You were entitled. You were entitled. To insurance. To insurance. A portion of your salary. A portion of your salary. To help you find. To help you find. Other work. Other work. And to save your family. And to save your family. From poverty. From poverty. Somehow. Somehow. Even though there was no money. Even though there was no money. The government found. The government found. All the money. All the money. But the best, but the best, I've left for last. I've left for last. In 1934, in 1934, the President of the United States, the President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, went on the radio, went on the radio. There being sadly, there being sadly, no TV, no TV. And he said to the American people, and he says to the American people, if the private sector, if the private sector cannot, cannot, or will not, or will not, hire tens of millions of Americans, hire tens of millions of Americans, then the federal government, then the federal government must do it, must do it. From 1934, from 1934 to 1941, to 1941, the federal government, the federal government created and filled, created and filled 11 million jobs, 11 million jobs. At today's population, at today's population, it would be 25 million jobs. It would be 25 million jobs. That shows you. That shows you what can be achieved. What can be achieved if people, if people are determined, are determined, motivated, motivated, and organized, and organized.
It came to pass. It came to pass. Because President Roosevelt. Because President Roosevelt went to the business community. Went to the business community of which he was a part. Of which he was a part. And to the richest Americans. And to the richest Americans of which he was a part. Of which he was a part. And he said to them. And he said to them. I'm going to tax you. I'm going to tax you. Businesses and rich people. Businesses and rich people. And you're gonna pay. And you're gonna pay. So I can do these programs. So I can do these programs. Because if you don't. Because if you don't. There are a lot of other people. There are a lot of other people. In the union. In the union. In the Socialist Party. In the Socialist Party. In the Communist Party. In the Communist Party. Who are going to cut you. Who are going to cut you. A lot less advantageous deal. A lot less advantageous deal. Half of the business community. Half of the business community. Broke from the other half. Broke from the other half. Supported Roosevelt. Supported Roosevelt. And that's how we have. And that's how we have social security. Social security. Unemployment insurance. Unemployment insurance. And the idea. And the idea. In the minds of Americans. In the minds of Americans. That they do not have to accept. That they do not have to accept a capitalism. A capitalism that visits disaster on our economy that is a disaster on our economy and then pretends to tell us and then pretends to tell us there's nothing they can do there's nothing they can do if you believe that if you believe that then i will sell you then i will sell you the fountain behind them <laughs> Here's the lesson I would urge you to learn. Here's the lesson I would urge you to learn. The unions. The unions. The socialists. The socialists. And the communists. And the communists. Were so excited. Were so excited. That they could win. That they could win. Social security. Social security. Unemployment insurance. Unemployment insurance. 11 million jobs. 11 million jobs. That they accepted. That they accepted. That was all. That was all. They could reasonably hope for. They could reasonably hope for. So they made the decision. So they made the decision to allow corporations to allow corporations to continue to continue to be organized to be organized the way they always had been the way they always had been at the top at the top the major shareholders the major shareholders 15 or 20 people 15 or 20 people who own the enterprise who own the enterprise just below them just below them a board of directors a board of directors another 15 or 20 people another 15 or 20 people selected by the major shareholders selected by the major shareholders who make all the decisions who make all the decisions what to produce what to produce how to produce, how to produce, where to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the profits, and what to do with the profits. The vast mass of people, the vast mass of people, the majority, the majority, in every corporation, in every corporation, are excluded, are excluded from any participation, from any participation in making the decisions, in making the decisions that shape their lives, that shape their lives. What to produce, what to produce, how to produce, how to produce, where to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the profits and what to do with the profits that their work creates. Their work creates. A, corporation a corporation is a fundamentally is a fundamentally undemocratic organization. Undemocratic organization. Democracy, democracy and corporation, and corporation are a contradiction, are a contradiction in terms. In terms. The decisions, the decisions not to invest, not to invest, not to hire millions of Americans, not to hire millions of are Americans, made by corporations, are made by corporations in the interest, in the interest of the profits, of the profits that are collected, that are collected by the board of directors, by the board of directors and the shareholders, and the shareholders. In the 1930s, in the 1930s, despite winning reforms, despite winning reforms, we 
left the corporations as they were. We left the corporations as they were. So no surprise. So no surprise. The corporation. The corporations had every incentive. Had every incentive to undo. To undo the taxes they had to pay. The taxes they had to pay. The regulations they had to follow. The regulations they had to follow. The people they had to hire. The people they had to hire. Not only did they have the incentive. Not only did they have the incentive, but because we left them, but because we left them, collecting all the profits, collecting all the profits, they could use the profits, they could use the profits to undo, to undo all the reforms, all the reforms that we won, that we won in the 1930s, in the 1930s. So we have lost. So we have lost most of the protections. Most of the protections. And they have reduced. And they have reduced all their taxes. All their taxes. And they're discussing now. And they're discussing now in Washington. In Washington, reducing. Reducing social security. Social security. Here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. This time. This time. As Occupy Wall Street, as Occupy Wall Street breaks all records, <coughs> breaks all records in one month, in one month, having become a movement across the country, having become a movement across the country, we cannot be, we cannot be satisfied, satisfied with getting a jobs program, with getting a jobs program, or regulating Wall Street, or regulating Wall Street. Because if we don't, because if we don't change the way corporations are organized, change the way corporations are organized, we will be no more successful. We will be no more successful than our parents' generation. Than our parents' generation. We will see our good work. We will see our good work undone. Undone. Once again. Once again. By the same corporation. By the same corporation. Who did it to us the first time. Who did it to us the first time. First time we let them be, shame on them. First time we let them be, shame on them. If we let them do it again. If we let them do it again. Shame on us. Shame on us. Here's the solution. Here's the solution. We need to transform corporate enterprise. We need to transform corporate enterprise. To make corporations. To make corporations. Just as democratic. Just as democratic. As we want everything else to be. As we want everything else to be. The people who most depend. The people who most depend. On the decisions of corporations. On the decisions of corporations. Are the people who work there. Are the people who work there. And the people who consume what they produce. And the people who consume what they produce. Under the rule of democracy. Under the rule of democracy. The majority should govern. The majority should govern. The majority are the workers and the consumers. The majority are the workers and consumers. Corporations have to be changed. Corporations have to be changed. So that the decisions are made. So that the decisions are made. Democratically. Democratically. By the majority. By the majority. And we should all say. And we should all say. A fond and sincere farewell. A fond and sincere farewell. To the shareholders. To the shareholders. And the boards of directors. And the boards of directors. We, you badly messed up. You badly messed up. We don't hold it against you. We don't hold it against you. Go home. Go home. <laughs>
You come and you do your particular task. And you do your particular task. Friday you come. Friday you come. You don't do your task. You don't do your task. You sit around with the other workers. You sit around with the other workers. And with representatives of the consumers and the surrounding community. And the representatives of the consumers and the surrounding community. And in a democratic way. And in a democratic way. You discuss and decide. You discuss and decide. What to produce. What to produce. How to produce. How to produce. Where to produce. Where to produce. And what to do with the profits of your work. And what to do with the profits of your work. Welcome to a democratic economic system. Welcome to a democratic economic system. And say with me. And say with me. The capitalism we inherited. To the capitalism we inherited. That has now broken down. That has now broken down. The second time in 75 years. The second time in 75 years. Go home. Go home. The second reason to think this way. The second reason to think this way. An historical parable. An historical parable. Once upon a time, once upon a time, human beings believe, human beings believe that the only way, that the only way to govern a society, to govern a society was to have a king, was to have a king, or an emperor, or an emperor, or a czar, or a czar, or a kaiser, or a kaiser. You get the picture. You get the picture. Then one day, then one day, we got rid of the king. We got rid of the king. Either they went home, either they went home, or they lost their head. Or they lost their heads. And guess what? And guess what? All the dire predictions. All the dire predictions. That society would collapse. That society would collapse. If it didn't have a king. If it didn't have a king. Turned out to be. Turned out to be. I will use a technical term. I will use a technical term. Bullshit. Bullshit. Second parallel. Parable. Se Second parable. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. It was thought. It was thought that when you reach about your puberty or your adolescence. That when you reach about your puberty or adolescence. And your mind begins to think about those other things. And your mind begins to think about those other things. And they include finding a mate. And they include finding a mate. It was thought. It was thought that the only way to do that. that the only way to do that is to have your parents. Is to have your parents find the right person. Find the right person. You were too young. You were too young. You didn't have enough life experience. You didn't have enough life experience. And your hormones. And your hormones. We're doing things. We're doing things. We can't discuss. We can't discuss. Guess what? Guess what? Everyone predicts. Everyone predicted that if you allowed young people, you allowed young people to, go out, to go out and figure this process out and figure this process on their out, own, on their own, and find their partner, and find their partner, civilization wouldn't end. Civilization. The world wouldn't collapse. The world wouldn't the collapse. family wouldn't disappear. The family wouldn't disappear. I got news for you. I got news for you. If we get rid of the Board of Directors. If we get rid of the Board of Directors. If we get rid of the major shareholders. If we get rid of the major shareholders. The machines will still be there. The machines will still the be there. The factory will not move. The factory will not the move. The workers will have all the skills. The workers will have all the skills. We will produce just fine. We will produce just fine. And for the first time. And for the first time. The mass of people. The mass of people. The 99 percent. The 99 percent. Who work for a living. Who work for a living. Will organize production. Will organize production. So it's meaningful. So it's meaningful. So it's safe. So it's safe. So it is profitable for us. So it is profitable for us. And not for 1%. And not for 1%. That is what the people of the world That is what the people of the world want. Want. It is what's being held back. It is what's being held back by a capitalist system. By a capitalist system. I say capitalist. I say capitalist. Because that's its name. Because that's its name. And to get beyond it, and to get beyond it, we have to name it. We have to name it. But we have the people. But we have the people. We have the plan. We have the plan. And the obstacle. And the obstacle is a tiny minority. Is a tiny minority. That make the prospects. That make the prospects. Very good. Very good. What we needed. What we needed. All of us. All of us. 
was some core, was some core of, people of people to be the spark. To be the spark. That's what you are. That's what you are. And on behalf of the majority of the American people. And on behalf of the majority of the American people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.